Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you guys are new around here, so am I. This is a brand new sister channel to our primary YouTube channel, the Air Gun Exploration and Advancement channel, otherwise known as AEAC Home. Over at AEAC Home, you can catch full product reviews on guns and other air gun related products as well as event coverage. Uh, SHOT Show in Las Vegas, IWA Outdoor Classics in Germany, and the big shooting matches around the country like the Extreme Bench Rest in Arizona and the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge out in Utah. But this new vlog here I started just a couple of weeks ago to give me the opportunity to step out of the commercialized spotlight and be able to spend more quality and direct one-on-one -on -one time with you guys. Have it be not so personal, and bring you in on the discovery process. As these guns are sent to me, I learn them, and then create official YouTube video reviews on them. Now, if you're an air gunner, and you're not familiar with this gun here, you very well should be. This is called the FX Impact, and it comes out of Sweden and it's been very much popularized over the last few years by big YouTubers such as Ted Beer of Ted's Holdover and Matt Dubber of Air Arms Hunting South Africa. This is their preferred gun, I believe, for both hunting and competition shooting. It's served those guys very well and it has won them a lot of money. So it has kind of become an icon in the air gun industry. Now, there's so much that I wanna cover with you today, so this might be a good time for you to hit pause, go to the bathroom, maybe grab a soda and some popcorn because we have a lot to work through and this video has been a long time coming and I've spent the last couple of weeks kinda of intermittently learning this gun so I can bring you an official YouTube video review on it over on Air Gun Exploration Channel, Air Gun Exploration Advancement Channel, AEAC Main, and I'm starting to form opinions and I'm starting to learn and it's just so much and I wanna be able to pass all that on to you guys before I head off and start that official review. But before we get started, a couple of um, just blanketing thoughts that I'm having. So FX Air Guns Sweden makes a lot of guns that are very sought after, very high performing, and they're just very good quality guns that the air gun community absolutely loves. And, and this one here, while they may get mad at me for telling you this, this is not for everyone, okay? This is a, this is a complicated gun in that it gives the owner, the end user, a tremendous amount of versatility and flexibility as far as tuning the gun to set it up to work with a specific ammunition that you want it to work with and fire that ammunition at a very specific velocity so that you can you know, steer that pellet through the wind as best as you can. And it also gives the, you the ability to very much tune efficiency. Now, that is not necessarily important to everyone. And the reason I kind of ward it like that is as a very avid air gunner myself, I kind of from the sidelines and the shadows have watched this gun be reviewed by these big YouTubers. And I freely admit to being having been somewhat intimidated on those guys talking about how they tune it how they set it up for hunting, how they set it up to compete at uh, national shooting events. Now, this gun has won these folks tremendous, a tremendous amount of money over the last couple years, and it's got several national championships under its belt. And those guys have, like I said, done videos on how they set it up and tune them, and I found that very intimidating. So it's kind of made me shy away from this gun um, I know that not all of the public necessarily feels that way because this rifle has pretty much been in an oversold state for the last couple of years, meaning as fast as the air gun dealers get them and as fast as FX Air Guns Sweden can make them, you know, they, they tend to sell out. And, that, and that's because they do so many things well. But if, if you're new to air gunning, 
and you don't need to compete in national events, and you're not a master tinkerer of sorts, you know, you can, you can get an FX product like an FX Royale, an FX Crown, an FX Wildcat, um, an FX Streamline. You know, these are simpler guns that come from the factory set up to perform at a very high level and serve you as an end user, you know, for pretty much anything you'd want to do and you really can't screw it up. And the reason I say screw it up is a lot of air gunners that are new to air gunning and really don't have a good understanding of what they're doing buy these FX impacts and they start tinkering with them and they start tuning them and they just screw them all to hell. And, and if you're going to buy this gun, know in your heart of hearts you don't necessarily have to change the settings. And what I mean by that is when these guns are first manufactured in FX Sweden, the factory goes through a, they take a lot of steps and they go through a lot of trouble to set these guns up from the factory to perform at a very high level for, an, for the average shooter. What I mean at a high level, accuracy, consistency, velocity over a wide range of conditions. So you can take it out of the box, shoot it, and it'll be great. But um, if you want to dive into the tuning of this gun, that's all well and good. And today I am going to take you through the basics of how to do that and, and hopefully not screw up your gun. Now, you can damage these if you don't take notes in this classroom session. And um, you can screw it up so bad that you're probably gonna send, have to send it off somewhere to get you know, fixed up. Now, that all being said, once they come from FX Airgun Sweden, they come to the distributor here, the distributorship here in the, in the United States, which is FX USA in North Carolina, I believe it is. And then they there also check the guns recheck them, and if there's any final adjustments that need to be made before they're sent out, they go ahead and do that. So there, you know, there's a lot of filters in place to make sure that you get you know, a gun that should work well for you. Well, let's just kind of back up just a second. Why would I ever want to change velocity on a gun like this? This one here is a 25 caliber. Um, it's gonna come from the manufacturer shooting a 25 grain pellet anywhere between 875 and 900 feet per second, which is a good velocity and a good energy, 45 foot pounds ish, for hunting, you know, some competition shooting, that kind of things. But if you pay attention to Ted Beer and Matt Dubber on their YouTube channels, they've discovered what I have discovered over the last couple of years as being a product reviewer for the air gun industry and that's that velocity is not always your friend and power isn't always your friend. What your friends are, are ballistic coefficient, it's slipperiness in the wind, um, velocity, and harmonics. And what those guys will do is they'll get a gun like this, then they'll, they'll do a lot of experimenting and then they'll find a pellet or a slug that they feel has an excellent ballistic coefficient in the wind because when they compete with these things nationally, they're competing out to 100 yards in 10, 15, 20, 25 mile an hour winds. And what we have all sort of found is that pellets tend to fly better in the 800 to 875 foot per second range window for a Diabolo shaped pellet. So those guys work hard to set these guns up to, to be very efficient with those pellets. And by efficient, I mean get a nice, long, flat shot string with very consistent shot-to-shot -shot velocity so that they can get out there in those national events and compete. And I'm pretty sure when they go home, they're probably tuning them back up to 875, 900, 920 feet per second because I know those guys are both avid hunters. All right, so let me make a blanket statement here so that you and I can have a trust between us, okay? I am working very closely directly with FX Air Guns Sweden and FX USA. My teachers, before I have brought you this information, are Frederick and Yuan Axelson, the father and son owner inventor team over at FX Air Guns Sweden, as well as the very popular and famous Ernest Rowe master tuner for pretty much every brand 
out there or all the big all the big boutique brands anyway who now works for FX USA. So when I share with you what I'm going to share, those guys have been the ones that have kind of given me that information. So please trust it, but at the same time, please use it as a general guideline because there's nothing that I'm going to be able to tell you today that's ABC123 that is going to be able to perfectly dial in your gun to your specific needs because there's a lot of tug of wars going on in this gun with a lot of different adjustments as you make them and it is very much a an event of experimentation, trial, error, failures, and successes. And I will tell you this, um, I have learned to tune this gun and I have gotten an extraordinary level of efficiency and power out of it. For example, this here is a 480 cc carbon fiber bottle. As I said, this is a 25 caliber. And um, by spending hours and hours with this, I've basically got it to where it'll give me 90 shots on a 250 bar fill that are right at 900 feet per second with a standard deviation of just like 3.10 feet per second. So that's around 46 foot pounds. So what that means is out of one fill, I'm getting 90 very consistent 900 foot per second with a 25.39 grain pellet. 46 foot pound shot. So if you spend the time with it, it will it real will reward. We're also going to go through all of the different barrel inserts and barrel kits that FX offers here in the United States. And I'm going to show you how to change all of that because as I said, when I was when I have been learning about this gun over the last couple of years, I found it to be intimidating and I want to try to take that fear away from you guys so that you don't have to go through what I went through and be afraid to purchase because really it is incredibly easy to work on the gun and it is incredibly easy to switch barrels and barrel liners, different calibers, different twist rates, different choke rate rates. And uh, so we're gonna go down all of that, those paths as well, okay? So let's start with, um, you know, the basic setting up for tuning. So this gun is available in 177, 22, 25, and 30. And one of the great things about the FX Impact is that you can purchase one rifle and independently of that rifle, you can purchase different barrel kits and different barrel inserts. And we'll get into that. And what that means to you is you can own one gun and use it across all these different barrels. Now, this FX Impact is the second rendition in this gun's history. There was the original FX Impacts. This is the new FX Impact X, okay? It's gone through some improvements in valving and efficiency and trigger and these kinds of things, but the primary differentiator between this and the original FX Impact is the barrel. Okay, something FX is very famous for are their smooth twist barrels. And what that means is it's got a smooth bore barrel and right at the very end, it goes through like kind of an external crimping process where right before that pellet leaves the barrel, uh, it goes through a, an externally crimp like choke and it puts a little spin on that pellet and you get great stability and great accuracy for long distances. That's different from a traditional rifled barrel and that it doesn't leave the the rifling bite marks on the pellet so you get a better ballistic coefficient it's more it's slippery er in the wind and it, 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 it overall tends to do a a better job now when this gun was released the fx impact x they changed that smooth twist barrel to a smooth twist x barrel okay now it has externally twisted, uh, an external twist that kind of runs through the entire barrel itself. And what guys are starting to discover is that's given the barrel greater flexibility in choosing ammunition. 
Traditionally, these have worked only with JSB pellets. Uh, that's because this gun has been designed around them. But now with this new Smooth Twist X barrel, which isn't a traditional rifle barrel, it's still kind of, when you look down it, you don't really see rifling. You see it, it looks like the whole thing's just kind of been melted into a twist. I don't know how exactly they do it. I'm told I'm gonna get a chance to go to Sweden and bring you guys a factory tour video. So if I do, I'll try to dive into that. But, but that's kind of this gun's claim, claim to fame. Now, all right, tuning. So this gun's regulated, okay? Which means there's a mechanical device inside that controls air output and, and measures it to a specific, basically measures it to a specific volume with each shot so that you don't get these shot curves that you see across less expensive rifles. You get, as I said, three foot per second standard deviation across 90 shots out of one fill and 90 shots at like 46 foot pounds, not the typical 20, 25, 30 that we see out of most, most air guns. So in general, when you set your regulator pressure for a 177 barrel, you're kind of setting it in that 100 to 110 bar range. For a 22 caliber barrel, you're kind of in that 110 to 120 range. Um, in a 25, you're kind of 125 to 135 bar range. And in 30 cal, you're probably 140, 150, 155 bar. Now, the regulator gauge is right here. Now, this itself is a guide because the gauges that are on, are on air guns aren't always the best. You may get a good one, you may not get a good one. This one here is eh. <laughs> okay, so what that means to you is you need a chronograph, you need to do a lot of experimentation, and the basic idea is, is as you increase regulator pressure, your velocity is going to come up because it's going to allow a greater amount of air behind each shot with that pellet. And the way that's done is right behind the trigger here, okay, there is, I believe, a three millimeter Allen. Let me see if I'm right. Nope, smaller. A two and a half millimeter? Yeah, two and a half millimeter Allen. Okay, not sure how well you guys can see that. That is your regulator adjustment. Counterclockwise increases airflow or increases regulator pressure. Clockwise decreases airflow or decreases regulator pressure. And your first job in tuning this rifle will be to set that to the appropriate range based on the caliber and barrel system that you're using, okay? Now there's some serious do's and don'ts with this regulator adjustment where you can cause permanent damage to your rifle if you don't listen up and write this down, okay? Counterclockwise is cool, all right? You're increasing airflow, not gonna hurt a thing. If you want to rotate this clockwise or tighten it, to lower regulator pressure or reduce airflow, you must first, okay, unscrew this bottle, okay? Very easy to do. You know, there's a lot of air in here. You're basically gonna unscrew it, I don't know, five or six turns. You don't have to go all the way off with it and you're gonna hear it kind of, you're gonna hear the air kind of leak out of it, all right? When you hear the air kind of leak out of it, you don't have to dry fire the gun to get the air out of the system after that. Just Take that regulator screw, move it counterclockwise. You don't have to go much with it, a quarter turn, half a turn, and you're gonna hear it bleed the rest of the air in the system, okay? Once you've done that, you are good to begin moving that regulator screw clockwise, which will lower regulator pressure. Now, the reason that's important is, let's say you buy a 2.5 like this, and it comes from the factory setup at 125 or 130 bar, on the regulator, but then you wanna go down to say a 177. Well, you're gonna to have to get that regulator pressure first thing down to 100, 110 bar-ish. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go, um, you're gonna bleed the air from the system, like I said, and then you're gonna go clockwise on that screw 
um, you know, to get it down into that range. It's going to be some, some, some trial and error on your part. Okay. So that's the basic premise behind the regulator adjustment. All right. Now here's where it gets a little bit fuzzy because these gauges aren't, you know, they're not perfect. You, the basic idea is you increase regulator pressure. Okay. When you're, when you're going through this exercise, make sure that your power wheel, which is basically a sort of hammer spring adjustment, okay, hammer spring tension adjustment, you generally want to start with this in the maximum position, all right? To back up on this a little bit, as I said, this is a hammer spring adjuster. ABC, one, two, three, doesn't really matter, okay? They both kind of do the same thing. Think of the ABC or one, two, three on one side or the other as kind of an in-between. All right, so let's say if, if I'm on max, let's say if, if max is 900 feet per second and then I go to four and that drops me to 875 feet per second, well, maybe if I come over here to, oops, or the other way, A, you know, that might drop me to 880 or 85 feet per second. They're just in-betweeners. You can go either way. It just gives you a greater amount of adjustability. Never turn this when the gun is cocked. Okay, or you can cause damage to it, all right? Otherwise, it operates very freely. So in general, start with this in the maximum position, okay? Then start slowly working that regulator pressure up. And as you do, you're going to see your velocity kind of come up, all right? Once you get it into the range that you want, all right, stop adjusting the regulator. Now, you may run into a situation where you're you're adding regulator pressure and you're adding regulator pressure and you keep adding it and your velocity is coming up and coming up and then the velocity stops coming up, all right? And in, in, in you're like, okay, well, I am keep opening the screw and, and, and nothing's going on. Well, that kind of means you've maxed out your regulator. So where you want to go from there is your hammer spring tension, which is right in here. It's a two millimeter Allen wrench, all right? So you're gonna kinda have to throw it in reverse from here and start over if you've reached that point, which means bleeding the bottle, bringing the regulator pressure back down so that you don't damage your gun when you go clockwise on that screw. And you need to kinda increase your hammer spring tension, which is super easy to do. Take this little two, mm <laughs> two millimeter Allen, slide it in here, and we're locked up and adjusting this clockwise, all right, is going to increase hammer tension, which increases velocity. Adjusting it counterclockwise is going to decrease hammer spring tension or, um, or lower velocity. And if you guys are new to air gunning, basically what's going on in here is you have, uh, when you cock the gun, it cocks back this hammer, all right? And then there's a valve that's sitting here. And when you pull the trigger, the hammer hits the valve, okay? And that opens the valve, which allows a spurt of air to move through the system, okay? So greater force opens the valve longer and more, more air. Less force opens the valve less, not as long, less air, okay? So that's the basic premise behind your hammer spring adjustment. So again, with this on max as a starting point, you're going to start screwing this clockwise to bring your velocity up and then start over with the regulator pr process okay and you want to kind of balance those guys out until you know you're in those originally cited um, ranges for the regulator pressure that I gave you for 177.2225 and, th and 30 okay those are kind of the basics there and then the power wheel is kind of for on the go on the fly you know, adjustments. You can write down the different velocities, you know, that each one will give you. Maybe you're going to do some barn shooting and you're worried about penetration or you're worried about, you know, distance of travel and backstop. Well, this just gives you the flexibility to turn them down. Or you're shooting a uh, lead-free alloy. Um, this one does pretty good with the Predator GTOs. At least it does real good at 25 yards with this power adjuster on about three had some good luck with it but uh, okay so that's your regulator that's your power wheel and that is your hammer spring adjuster inside 
this little floating valve right here, <clears throat> all right? This guy right here, <laughs> this is called a valve, the valve adjustment screw, all right? Now, think of this as a bumper or a bump stop for that hammer when that hammer is traveling. So like we said, you have, or the, when the valve is traveling, excuse me, hammer hits the valve, okay? Valve opens up and, clo and closes again. Well, in a lot of air guns, they lose efficiency when the hammer strikes the valve, the valve open, you know, spring loaded, it comes back and it hits the hammer and kind of bounces off of it and does like a little, so it strikes, hits it and does like a little hop like that, like almost like a collision or in a rebound, okay? That little hop wastes air, all right? So you can increase efficiency by fine tuning this valve screw right here, all right? So when you first begin tuning the rifle, right? You want this valve, <laughs> where this valve screw, uh, screw it out, unscrew it as far as far as it'll go, okay? Because it's basically a bumper for that valve um, as it's traveling, and it's literally a bumper. There's a rubber ball on the end of it, and that'll give it free, you know, all the free travel, so you have maximum power. Once in your mind, like for example, in my mind, once this was set up to shoot at 900 feet per second, and I felt my regulator was in the right range, and you know, all that was good. You know, I did all that with this fully counterclockwise or opened up all of the way. I can increase the gun's overall efficiency by starting to rotate this clockwise or screw it in. And that's because of that hammer bounce that we talked about, okay? You're gonna start screwing it in from this side, that rubber ball, and, and, and you're gonna ultimately find a very good distance or tolerance to where when the hammer strikes the valve, the valve goes forward, it hits the bumper with just enough force to absorb the shock where it doesn't come back and, and, and hit that valve again and open it and waste that air, okay? The basic idea is you screw it in just a little, little bit at a time. There's lines on it, there's marker lines on it. You always wanna start with it screwed all the way out or past line four. You can screw it all the way out. It's not gonna hurt anything. You know, There's no air or anything that's gonna pop out of here. Um, and then you start screwing it in a little bit at a time until you notice your velocity start to come down just a hair. Okay, once you've done that, you've probably found the ideal position for this, which is going to increase your efficiency. All right? So that is the general tuning premise for the FX impact. Now, I've been asked by FX to make a lot of movies for you guys, kind of going through these different barrels and, and you know, give you the basic premise of, you know, how each one works with what pellet and at what velocities and, and so on and so forth. The first video that you're gonna see on AEAC Main is a full review of that, of this gun. And that, is made, that one is gonna be made possible by Utah Air Guns. And then I've got Air Guns of Arizona helping me to make some videos with this gun and then FX USA directly. So you guys are gonna get FX Impact Overload. So you probably wanna subscribe here and click your notification bell so that you know when I release a video and also over at AEAC Main, subscribe there, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of this. I am in the final stages of learning with this gun and what that means is that I am just days away of starting to shoot video. Normally I shoot for two to three days and then it's three, two or three days in the editing chair. Then we've got a video. I'm gonna to try to bring that to you before I leave for the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge uh, early next week. So I have a busy week ahead of me. But, <clears throat> As I said, I don't want you guys afraid of any of this, so let me show you how easy and versatile this platform is when it comes to swapping barrel inserts, and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute, and swapping, 
So sorry guys, I made that video so long that my DSLR camera automatically shut off. I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. I think it has something to do with the MP3, MP4 format. Only being allowed to record for so long in a DSLR, but sorry. So where were we? Barrel inserts and barrel systems, okay? So gotta show you how all that works. This here is a barrel kit, all right? This is $400 for the shroud, the barrel, the bolt probe, and the magazine, okay? What that will enable you to do is change calibers. You buy one gun, and you can switch between 177, 22, 25, and 30. 400 bucks for that, okay? Or you can buy just the insert which sits inside of this blued sleeve, which is the actual barrel itself that interfaces with the pellet for around 110 bucks. Once you buy the barrel kit to match the caliber that you want, you can experiment with different inserts. FX is going to be bringing to us very soon inserts where you can change twist rate, chokes, um, overall tolerances, these kinds of things. If you don't know it, Matt Dubber has been over in Sweden um, for the last couple of weeks working very closely with FX to develop one of these that will shoot slugs. Okay, so as I mentioned early on, I don't want you guys afraid of this technology, so let me take you through how incredibly simple this is to do. All right, let's start with maintenance. Let's say I just want to clean my barrel. All right, all I'm going to do is unscrew the shroud. These can be on pretty tight when you first get them. All right, unscrew it and pull it off. To get this off the first time, I had to lock this impact between my knees and really it's counterclockwise, twist counterclockwise to pop this guy off. And now you'll see right here the blued what they're, I believe they're calling a sleeve. Now this sleeve has a barrel insert inside of it, okay? The actual barrel that interfaces with the pellet. And you'll see a little end cap here on the end and it's threaded and it's threaded in here to about here. And the only tool I need to remove and clean this barrel insert is a 10 millimeter wrench, all right? Now, at the end of the threads here, there's a little flat spot and you can see that on there and that enables me to loosen this little end cap. Now, when you first buy your Impact, your Crown, your Wildcat MK2, the insert that is in here is going to have several O-rings around it, and these O-rings interface with this barrel sleeve, okay? Now, FX tells me that that's there mostly for harmonics, to make it sound a little bit more refined, but in theory it can contribute to accuracy because harmonics can play a role in accuracy. I can tell you that when I did the FX Crown review, when I did the Wildcat MK2 review, I took these out. I don't think that Ted Beer shoots with them, Matt, I don't know, but I haven't found that, that they, alter with ac they alter accuracy, but I would encourage you to experiment both ways. Now you just unscrew this. All right, and you'll see, here's the, the, uh, the sleeve. Now, when you first buy your gun, like I said, it's gonna have these O-rings spaced out, about three of them across here, so this butt can be a little tough to get out. The easiest way to do it is to get yourself a little piece of cardboard like this, wrap it around the barrel end, grab yourself a pipe wrench, and very gently rock back and forth as you apply force this way and it'll slide out because you have to overcome the grip that those O-rings are putting on that barrel and I on that barrel sleeve. And I have found that just twisting and pulling will get them out for you for the most, will get this out for you pretty darn easily, at least on everything that I've touched so far. Okay. Now, if when you're done, when you pull this out, you want to look in here and make sure that one of these O-rings hasn't been left down in there, all right? Because they, they, can, they can come off of here and just fall into this. If you do see one left down in there, do not dry fire the gun to shoot it out because 
All right, between this brass piece and this stainless piece, there's an O-ring that lives inside of here. You will launch that out of that system and make life generally miserable for yourself trying to take that all apart and get that back in there. Instead, just shake it upside down. It's gonna come right out for you. Okay, now once you've removed the O-rings, all right, this literally comes out that easily. Okay, and now I've got to, with just this, in about 30 seconds, I can take this out and service it. Now you can see those external crimps on the outside of this barrel. And when you look through here, like I said, it just looks like a melted twist. There's no rifle, um, there's no rifling that's biting into that pellet. So you get a very smooth traveling pellet that contributes to better accuracy. This end has a little cut on it, as you can see. And that's the end that goes in. But very easy to pull out service. I pull patchworms through here with Ballastol, dry it out. I don't have to worry about oil coming down into the transfer port and I just literally put it back in. Now what I like to do, and I don't know if this makes a difference. I haven't ex experimented with it yet, but I kind of like to index it. Just common sense tells me that it's good to have this free and floating in the middle here. And I'll take my little threaded piece and just screw it back in. This is all that it generally takes to service these guns. Now, this is not a tightening event and it is barely even a snugging event, all right? I'm choking way up on this little 10 millimeter wrench and I'm just ever so slightly until it stops. I don't want to torque or twist or bend anything in here. Then I just take my shroud. Not a bad idea to put some oil on here because there's some O-rings that interface with this. Push it back into place and rotate clockwise. And that is all it takes to remove the $110 insert to experiment with twist rates and chokes. It's that fast, it's that fun. Now, let's say I buy a 2.2 and I wanna go up to 2.5. Well, now I gotta get myself a barrel kit, okay? And how do I change the barrel kit? Incredibly easy, all right? Over on this side of the gun, you're going to see an Allen right here. All right, if you've seen pictures of the previous generation FX Impact, this is the X, um, there was a knob here, and the knob looks a lot like this power wheel. All right, and you would unscrew the knob and um, be able to slide the barrel system out. Well, now I think we take a three millimeter, yep, all right, and we just back this screw, or this grub screw, all the way out. Okay, and there it is. Now, with just a little bit of pressure, very gently pull out the system. Guys, gals, it's that easy, all right? Now, if I switch calibers, I need to switch to the appropriate sized bolt probe to match the caliber. That'll change the overall diameter of this and it'll change the size of the pathway in which the air travels. So we have to change that too, okay? Very, very simple to do. All right, in the case of the Impact X here, gosh, I'm running out of real estate with these barrel kits all over the place. Okay, when I cock the gun, you're gonna see some movement over here. All right, and you want to expose this little baby grub screw. Make it out of your way. Expose that little baby grub screw right here. Okay, because I'm gonna back that out and that grub screw interfaces inside this hole. This just sits in there like so. Okay, I'm gonna back the grub screw out and then this will just pull right out of the back of the gun. It's that easy. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on its side just so I can see what I'm doing without you having to look at the top of my ugly head. And let me make sure I got, okay. So this is a 1.5 millimeter Allen. I'm gonna loosen this counterclockwise, and I'm gonna completely remove this screw. All right, and there it is. So now there is nothing holding this probe in here anymore. All right, now you can take 
a four millimeter if you choose, and interface it with the back of the probe. This doesn't screw in or anything, but it kind of holds it so that you can just more easily remove it. What I like to do is just insert it up in there, all right, turn it upside down like that and kind of jiggle, and it's not gonna come out. Or just do that, <laughs> all right? But I've used the four millimeter as a guide to kind of guide it out. And there it is, and you can see where this grub screw just interfaces and it just holds it in place. So this isn't something we need to over tighten. Um, I will tell you that these tend to back out over time. And again, that's just another example of how this is a pro gun. This is for somebody who always wants to tune and tinker. It doesn't have to be. Like I said, FX is going to send this to you in a form, in a state. You don't have to mess with. It's going to perform at a high level, all right? But a little blue Loctite on there is probably not a bad idea. A little blue Loctite, right? Or just check on it every now and then. You don't need to crank on it and over tighten just, you know, just, uh, oh, don't want to lose you. All right, just get it good and snug. So to put it back in, I'm going to line this hole, all right, up with the right side of the gun. So this can probably be easier done if I cock it. All right, now I've brought this all the way back where it's really easy for me just to pop in there. Just gonna push it in. All there is to it, all right? It kind of floats around. Now, I'm gonna use the cocking lever to get this into position. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go. To get this guy here into position to where I can now reach it with my grub screw. All right, so I'm gonna get it started. I'm not gonna over tighten on this because I remember I need it to interface with the inside of that hole. So now I can take my four millimeter and with light pressure with the little guy, index the back of that bolt probe until I can screw that grub screw into place, all right? And that's kind of the idea there. Do not need to over tighten this. I don't like to use T-handles on things like this. The simple twist and torque of this guy will get it, will get it done, all right? Then I just simply take my barrel, where did you go? my barrel kit, line it up, and well before we do that, you can't misalign this. Here's the port where the air comes through and you'll see on the bottom of the port, there's a little cutout. That cutout is going to interface with a notch that's back in here. So when I push this in, I'm going to slowly rotate it side to side until it falls into place with that notch. And that notch, if I remember, is straight down. So I'm gonna kind of get this in place here. Just gently work it through here, there, until it stops. Now I'm gonna just rotate, boom. See it fall into place? Let me back it out again. So that pushes up against the back. I'm gonna rotate gently. There, it just fell into place. Now I know that this barrel system is as far back as it's supposed to go. And then remember, I'm gonna take my little grub screw here, my three mil, and lock down that system. That is what's so incredibly badass about this. It's easy. At first it was intimidating to me because I didn't understand it. And for the life of me, I couldn't find a good video out there that brought me through how to do all of this. So fortunately, I've had really good people in my world directly from the factory. The, like I said, the owners, inventors, creators of these systems that have been my teacher. And I really wanted to be able to teach that to you before I got into the full review of this gun, um, hopefully this week. Now, I do wanna to touch on these barrel kits for a second, okay? For example, the standard barrel in 177, 225, and 30 is 24 inches long. That's what ships with the gun 
when you order it in a specific caliber. FX also has available a new 700 millimeter barrel. That's a little bit longer, okay? The basic premise in air guns is the longer barrel gives you more power using the same volume of air. Okay, so let's say I wanna compete nationally with a gun like this, and I need to be able to shoot a heavier pellet or slug to be able to be effective in the high winds and win, because there's big money on the line at those competitions. I will generally want to go to a longer barrel system that'll give me more power with less air used because I'm gonna need to turn all this up to get that heavier projectile to the speed that I need it to be to be effective in that wind. And the longer barrel basically enables me to do that using less air. If I kept the shorter system, I would have to tune all of this up to where it's using more air because I'm compensating for the shorter barrel. Shorter barrels take more air, longer barrels take less, but the longer barrel may not be as convenient, okay? It may not be as convenient, right, out in the woods, you know, because now I'm longer, but in the prairie, you know, around the farmhouse, this could be the cat's meow for you, all right? So to give you an idea, here's the two 30 cals, all right? The 700 millimeters on top, the 24 inches on the bottom. So you have that available to you in 30 cal, in 25, and if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong, 22. All right, double check me on that one, all right? Now FX also has a couple of different shroud systems styles available, all right? For example, this here is a 177 barrel kit, all right? Remember, with each kit comes a magazine as well. I have such brain damage and it's so early in the morning, I can't remember if I told you that, but it also comes with a barrel kit. But 177 and 22 come with an extendable shroud, all right? In the collapsed version, it's quiet, but it's not as quiet as it is when it's extended, all right? And, um, in the collapsed version, it just gives you more flexibility, you know, to maneuver in tight, tight spaces. That's the basic idea there. Here it is in, in 2.2. I don't believe they offer these collapsible shrouds in anything other than 177 and 2.2. Um, the, the basic premise there is you can add You can add or subtract these additional rings, which with each one gives you increased moderation at the expense of increased length. All right, so that's the general premise. So I think that's it for today, guys. I don't know about you, but I am tired and I want to go enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Not that this hasn't been fun, but um, that's been a lot for anyone to digest in one big video and for me to bring to you guys from this early in the day. But like I said, I really don't want you to be afraid of this technology like I was and hesitant because I just couldn't find anything out there that, that as far as videos or write-ups that took me through this from A to Z and answered all the questions for me to where, you know, it just, it just wasn't a concern anymore. And now that I've spent a couple of weeks with this, it doesn't scare me at all. And and I'm really excited about this platform and all that it's gonna be able to offer you guys now that you hopefully understand it. And so with that, thank you very much for spending so much time with me. Don't forget, we got a lot of great videos coming to you. Um, Utah Air Guns is gonna help me with a couple of these videos and Air Guns of Arizona is gonna help me with some and FX USA is gonna directly help me with some and, I, and I'm gonna bring you a lot of FX Impact X content as we get through all these. But for those of you that follow me and are and you know are into more of the Springers and, and these kinds of things, don't worry. We're not gonna do all this consecutive. I'm gonna space it out so that you guys don't miss out on the things that, that you love. So with that, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels so that you don't miss anything. And uh, please spread the good word, tell all your friends about us. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a fantastic day.
Thank you.